be a part of the Utah Summer Games. Today on Sweethearts, the outrageous Phyllis Diller, Mr. Belvedere, Christopher Hewitt, and the effervescent Anna Marie Johnson try to find the one story of true love from these three. God brought us together. I made sure we sat together. When we met, I had to get something off my chest, my shirt. <laughs> Why was I attracted to him? The way he handled my limbs. <laughs> Join the fun as our celebrities try to find the real lovebirds on Sweethearts. Now, here's your host, Charles Nelson Hello, Ryan. thank you. Thank you, and welcome once again to Sweethearts. Hello, stars, how are you? Hi, we, we're going to have a Bible class story oh, today, no, so we not. should be on our behavior. Yeah. Now, we're going to meet two other couples besides. Three couples, but don't be fooled, because only one couple is telling you the truth. Everything about them is absolutely accurate. It's true. Everything about the other two couples, however, is made up. As a matter of fact, they never knew each other until we put them together here on Sweethearts. And even I don't know the real couple. Now, after you've heard all three of our love stories today, I'm going to ask you to vote. That's a hard word for television. Vote <laughs> for the one couple you think are the real sweethearts. For each celebrity a couple fools, that couple wins $500. If the real couple fools all three celebrities, They'll win $1,500 plus our special second honeymoon vacation. Today it's to the Florida coast. Whoa. And now let's meet our first couple, Jim McCrell. I'm getting in a reverent mood. Uh, yes, this is yes. the Bible class story. Yes, these two say they would swear on a stack of Bibles that God brought them together. Uh, say hello to Dan and Kathy McGowan. Hello, Dan. Oh, yes, they... Hi, Daniel. Welcome to Sweethearts. Now, who would like to start this lovely story? I would. All right, Kathy. Daniel and I met at a Bible study at our church. At first, I wasn't romantically interested in him, but he was very, very persistent. For example, I would usually arrive late, and lo and behold, the only seat available was always next to Dan. Um, soon we started... Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh -huh. Soon I... we started going out to breakfast and lunch, but only as good friends. Yeah. Well, now, when did you first see her? Well, at the Bible study, and it didn't take me long to realize that I wanted Kathy to be my wife. So I asked her to come over to dinner for a very romantic evening at my apartment. And I even hired a butler and a violin player yes, to make the evening more special. <laughs> so after dinner, I had the uh, butler bring out the dessert platter, and I asked Kathy if she'd like some dessert. And I was pretty suspicious by this time, so I lifted up the silver lid, and there was this beautiful diamond ring there. And we were married six months later, and we've been happily married ever since. Isn't that a beautiful story? Now, how many children do you have? We have one. One, one child. child? Yes. All right. You have to, I hope, no, they don't ask you why you were late to Bible class. Mm -hmm. Now, all right, now it's time we should have our celebrities ask some questions of our first couple. I would have knelt for this story, but I had recent surgery. <laughs> now, we'll start with Anne Marie Johnson. Okay, first, have, you, have either of you ever had a bad thought in your life? This is a very nice couple. <laughs> you don't need to answer that. Secondly, um, Daniel, I'm, I'm curious, did the violin player tune up at your home or before? He was actually tuned up before he arrived at the before home. Before he yes. arrived at the home. Now, how did you size the ring for Kathy? It was all guessing, guesswork. And Kathy, did the ring fit? Yes, it did. Okay, and it Kathy, nicely. I'm curious, what's, wh what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a registered nurse. Uh-huh. That's for, sweet. And that, that's a wonderful pairing. I mean, if he's ill, she knows what to do. <laughs> and, and Kathy, what's the difference between a hymn and a psalm? A hymn and a psalm. Um, I believe a hymn you sing and a psalm is found in the Bible. All right, Christopher? Yes. Well, I was actually the butler that served that meal. <laughs> yeah. uh, but apart from that, Dan, tell me, who wrote the Apocalypse? The Apocalypse? I do not know who wrote the Apocalypse. Who wrote Revelations? Uh, Revelation was, I believe, John. And uh, where did he write it? I believe he wrote it in Rome. Uh huh. Uh, Kathy, uh, what do choir members wear under their robes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure they wear their street clothes. They, they do. Their clothes. Even in summer? Oh, I'm, I guess. I'm I not see. sure. <laughs> then there's no reason for them going from side to okay, side. There's the bell. <laughs> now, so now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have 
Phyllis asked questions of our, our first couple, and she recently played a nun to great success. Yes, yes. So there should be no There's problem There's no problem, here. no. Kathy, recite for me the shortest uh, verse in the Bible. Um, uh, tell me the first, uh, first chapter of the Old Testament. The first chapter of the Old Testament is Genesis. And what's the first chapter of the New Testament, Daniel? That would be Matthew. And uh, spell Deuteronomy, Daniel. D-E-U-T-R-O-N-O-M-Y. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> how many commandments are there? Me? You asking me? Uh, yes, Dan. Uh, ten. Okay. Kathy, have you ever broken it? Okay, there's the bell. Oh, oh, Ken. <laughs> Time is up for a celebrity. Now, are they really sweethearts in God's name or some other name? <laughs> or is one of our other couples? Do we two more couples in our celebrities will vote? Have a love safe. Today, today we, today we can visit with wonderful Anne Marie. Now she has a 24 inch waist, girls. 24 and you know, inch and a half. 24 and a half. And she half. has that because at one time she was on three series at once. What's yeah. happening now, Double Trouble Hill Street Blues, which means she had three lunches. <laughs> and that's the way it now your new series, In the Heat of the In Night. In the Heat of the Night with Carol O'Connor and Howard Rollins. Isn't it second year? Second year. One, yeah. It's a wonderful show. We're very excited. And. You have a movie coming out. I have a movie, and I want you to do this title. I'm going to get you, sucker. I'm going to get you, sucker. Perfect. Your official... Sucker with an A, right? Yeah, you know. Okay. Excellent. Speaking of suckers, it's time to meet our next couple. That's a... See, that's a segue. Good segue. Uh, Jim McCrell. Yes, indeed. Who are they? Well, they claim that when they met at King's Island, he treated her like a queen. They've been a royal and loyal couple ever since. Meet Guy and Alyssa Hinton. Hi, Alyssa. You're lovely. Hello, and... God. Now these couple, this couple met at the war on the water. Now who'd like to start this story? I will. All right, Elisa. Okay, we met at Kings Island. Uh, Guy and I went there, but I went with a bunch of friends of mine, and we were going on the Roaring Rapids ride. But when we got there, there was this wheel that you get into, but they can only hold six people, and I was there with seven. And I noticed uh, that we only had five in my group. Yeah. And uh, so we had an empty spot. So I asked Elisa to join us. Yeah, and she, you felt his group was rather. Well, he, wild. they were very wild, but my only other choice was a bunch of screaming kids, so I went with Guy, but his group really were goobers. I mean, they were shaking the boat even before we got out of the starting day. Well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to see Elisa in a wet T-shirt. Uh -huh. So uh, we rocked the boat. This and came right after our Bible class story. <laughs> <laughs> went right through the waterfall, and Elisa got pretty upset, and she was yeah. soaked from head to toe. And, and I told her that... Uh, I couldn't let her meet my mother that way. Oh. Right yeah. to the point. <laughs> that, so yeah. you, you took her to your car? Yeah, he was really nice about it. He, you know, offered to give me a dry T-shirt, which he did. So we went out to the car and uh, we've been together and, and talked. And, and she wore your clothes, your gym clothes, your, your dry T-shirt. his shirt. <laughs> and then you went out and, that evening, right? We went out that evening and every I, drink about seven And what was that word you used, Gruber's? What was Gubber? Gubbers? Whatever she said. I never, I'm just new at this. Now it's time to start our questions for our second couple. And we'll start with Christopher Hewitt. Oh. Uh, do you go side by side on these rides? No, it's a, it's a, a wheel. wheel. And you sit. It's a wheel. Six of you sit. And yeah, I see. And the moment she got wet, you thought immediately, I must introduce her to my mother. Is that what you... Uh, well, I thought other things before that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. When she got in my gym clothes, I thought... She uh, did she change up. into your gym clothes in your car? Uh, no, outside the car. Outside the car? In public view, I see. Uh, Alisa, what do you do for a living? I'm assistant PR at the Cincinnati Zoo. Aha! Uh -huh. I see. And what kind of animal does Guy remind you of? <laughs> hmm, whoa! Well, in the morning, let's... Oh, whoa! <laughs> well, what about in the twilight in the evening? <laughs> The last time I had a wet T-shirt on, Fang threw me in the dryer. <laughs> a guy, what do you do for a living? I'm a security guard. Uh, oh, I see. And do you carry a gun? Yes, I do. What kind of a gun? Colt Python. A who? Colt Python. And where do you carry it? On my right side. On your right side. And what kind of a holster? Uh, Luger holster. Ah. Uh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
right. by the bell. <laughs> All right, uh, Anne Marie. Well, I don't know. I'm along with Phyllis. There's no way in heck anyone would be excited with me in a wet T-shirt. But I can see that uh, no problem with you. Um, <laughs> what kind of car? did Guy have at the time where you stripped down in front of all of America to see to change your clothes? It's a black Mustang. We still have it. You still have it. That's great. And and um, what is the main exhibit at the zoo? The Beast. It's the roller coaster. No, I mean the, the zoo that she works oh, in. Sorry. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, well, we just got in some koala bears from Australia. So and, they're very popular. And isn't one expecting a baby? At the Cincinnati Zoo? No. Mm -hmm. Or is this the Cincinnati Zoo? Cincinnati Zoo, yeah. And, and Guy, what, you're a security guard for what company? I mean, what? First National Bank. And you need a gun for that? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. Well, that's our second couple for today. Are they really sweet answers? Their story, all wet. You know, that's your vote. Now decide now because we have one more couple coming up. Thank you, have a lovely. And then our celebrities will vote. <laughs> of the day. Jim McCrell. Well, Charles, he went out on a limb for her, and she knew he was no sap. Meet tree lovers Irving and Minnie Dunn. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Hi, Minnie. Hi, Irving. This is our first nature story, which is a lovely story. Who would like to start to I tell? Start. Okay, Minnie. Um, I have a wonderful 100-year-old oak in my backyard that I inherited from my grandmother with the house. And one night in a lightning storm, yes. it hit the tree and it was awful. And I was just well, really... I, I got in a panic phone call just as I was leaving for work. And uh, it turned out it was Minnie calling about her tree. She was afraid it had been destroyed. And, and it, you were a tree surgeon. That's why she called you. That's yes. right. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah. I was also a tree surgeon going home. And yeah. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it that day. So he came the next day, and he was so nice because he didn't treat me like a, a nut burger or something, you know. He was just really compassionate about my tree, and, and yeah. I was so impressed, I invited him to stay for dinner. And she makes the best fried chicken in the world. Best fried chicken. And blackberry pie. And what happened to the, to the tree? One, one limb Well, was... a couple days later, I, I felt I'd better check it out again. We had a little, a little more fried chicken, didn't we? <laughs> and uh, I, I came over about three days that week, and... Uh, and, and two days later, he came again, and then two more we days went out later. To the zoo, uh, now, the how Sunday. long has the tree been dead? Oh no, I'm just it's fine, right? The tree is fine. It is. It's wonderful. Oh good, because he seemed a little preoccupied with the chicken. Now it's time for our questions for our third, uh, third couple, and let's begin with the wonderful Phyllis Diller. Uh, do you, you know it's a bad evening for a tree? A three dog night. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What, what is the name of the most famous tree surgeon, uh, the very commercial name? Well, it, probably in Portland, uh, Arnold, uh, uh, Arnold... No, 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 the, 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 the great classic name for if you're going to have a tree surgeon. William uh, Quintergrass, probably. Well, whatever you say. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard of a Ginga tree? What uh, country would a Ginga tree be in? A Ginga tree, I believe, is from Japan, isn't it? Okay, uh, Anne Marie, dear. Um, Irving, do you use a systemic or a topical when you're treating a, a Dutch elm disease? Uh, well, first of all, you don't treat Dutch elm disease. When you get a Dutch elm uh, uh, disease in your tree, the only thing you can do is get rid of it and hope it doesn't spread. Hmm. And also, um, Minnie? Yes. How did you bat your batter for the fried chicken? What did you use? I use, oh. I roll my chicken in egg, uh -huh. and then I have uh, flour and salt and pepper and some spices. Uh -huh. It's poultry seasoning, and I roll my chicken in that. Irving, what did you have to do for the tree? Did you have to remove any of the limbs? I, I did have to remove one limb, and I had to brace another with a do cable. Do you remove the limbs yourself, or do you have assistance to help you remove the limbs? In this case, uh, I removed it myself. And I do you destroy them with a shredder? Okay, a uh, doctor, uh, <laughs> it. Do you use tree cement when you um, mended the tree? The only time you really use tree cement is if you know you, you aren't going to be going back again. Uh, I've got a lot of contract clients, and I like to use something like a Beekman wax. The thing is, you have to keep coming oh, back. I see, and yes. And, uh, tell me, Minnie, do you have a lot of birds in the garden? <laughs> yes, we And do. what kind of birds do you have? We have a lot of hummingbirds. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. What kind I of noise do hummingbirds make? They hum. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> do you do your feet Can you do your feet uh -huh. I see. And, uh, hmm, uh, how's your tree doing now? My tree is wonderful. I see. 
Oh, that's you. all the time we have for couple three. Are they telling the truth? They must be because I have Dutch Elm disease. <laughs> You've heard all three stories, and our celebrities will vote who they think the real couple is right after this. Why don't you have a lunch? Promotional fee has been paid to the production company by some of the following. Tom's Liquid Antacid, serious heartburn medicine for your acid indigestion. With a taste so good, you can hardly wait to have to take it. Use as directed. A garment bag from Reed St. James, makers of loafers, casual wear, and fine dress menswear. Reed St. James, quality that stands the test of time. Princess House Products, beautiful hand-blown and lead crystal. Elegant tableware and decorative accessories available exclusively through independent Princess House consultants. Lucian Picard's Royale Collection, crafted for dress or sportswear, stylish two-tone bracelet, featuring date display and has Swiss movement for accuracy. From Lucian Picard. Zip Wax. My oh my, what a wonderful way to remove unwanted hair. Like salon waxing, Zip keeps you smoother up to six weeks. Zip Wax. It's time to find out now which of our three couples are really sweethearts on today's show. Now, for each celebrity a couple fools, they win $500. And if the real couple manages to fool all three celebrities, they'll win $1,500 plus a second honeymoon vacation. Today, it's the Florida coast, Jim! Well, Charles, it's a getaway vacation to the sunny shores of Florida. And you'll enjoy a week's stay at the Sheraton Ball Harbor, one of South Florida's finest oceanfront resorts. Luxurious accommodations, acclaimed entertainment, and shopping in a relaxing atmosphere from Sheraton Ball Harbor. Now back to you, Charles. Okay, now... Now it's time to recap these three wonderful stories. Is it couple number one, the Bible class story, Daniel and Kathy? Why was she always late to Bible class? Was she fooling around at the mall? <laughs> couple number two, Guy and Elisa, must he wet down all his girls before he brings them home to her mother? And did she insist on her wearing a wet wedding dress? Couple number two, who knows? Now, couple number three, did Irving cure Minnie's oak by good doses of wonderful hot fried chicken soup, only time will tell. Now remember, our imposters win by getting votes. I almost said getting jokes, because I don't have any. And our real couple wins by not getting votes. So let's start by asking our beautiful Anne-Marie, which of three, these three wonderful couples do you think are really sweetheart. Well, I'll tell you, I had I had major problems with uh, Guy and Elisa. First of all, Oops. no woman in her right mind would change her clothes outside, wet or not wet. It's difficult. Um, <laughs> I love the story of Dan, Dan, Danny and Kathy. It was really beautiful, but too beautiful to believe. And violinists usually tune up in the kitchen. And Irving and Minnie, I go with you. For some reason, I used to be a botanist and I had a landscaping company. I was a little uncertain about the tree surgery, but I kind of went with you. You guys. went with couple number three, the yeah. surgeon and the lady. Fine. Christopher. Well, I, I didn't go with Daniel and Kathy. Daniel didn't know that John was exiled to the island of Patmos, oh. which is quite famous. I didn't go with the tree surgery group because there <laughs> is no such thing as tree cement. And also hummingbirds, the, their wings hum, but they trumpet when they're attacking you. They make a trumpet sound to frighten other birds away. So they do make. So I went with Guy and Elisa. I would change if okay. I was cold anywhere. Or oh, fine. Speaking, speaking of trumpet sounds, Phyllis? Uh, oh, yes. Well, uh, uh, Elisa said uh, koala bear. Now, anyone who works at a zoo will not say koala bear because it's a marsupial. It, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a bear. Thank it would you, say doctor. koala. Okay. Now, the, the Bible students, I don't believe Bible students would go to all that trouble with the violinist and the, all that romantic uh, kind of falderal. <laughs> I, uh, and uh, the, the doctor here, all my doctors are named her. Yes. Okay. Now, that's wonderful. Okay. So, now we have two votes for Irvin Minnie. Yes. We have two votes for Irvin. Let's see. The moment of truth now comes at last. Will the real sweethearts on today's show please give each other <laughs> a big hug and a kiss? Oh! I love it! See? It pays to be on the side of the Lord. Our first couple, Daniel and Kathy, managed to fool all three of you, so they re receive our second honeymoon trip plus their $1,500. Thank you. <laughs> Couple number two, 
with their all wet store, they were wonderful guy and Elisa. They fooled Christopher, so they too win five hundred dollars. Isn't that nice? Now, Elisa, now that you're dried off, who are you? I am Renata Longmire. I work in a nutrition center at a health spa. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. And Guy, who are you? Pray tell. I'm David Marks, and I'm a police officer. Oh, wow. You were both wonderful. Now we come to the tree and the tree surgeon. They also have fooled two celebrities, Anne Marie and Phyllis, and they receive $1,000. Everyone won today. Now, Minnie, who are you? My name is Janet Bernice, and I'm a word processor. Oh, how wonderful. You were terrific on the show. And Doctor, who are you? I'm Greg Prentice. I'm a writer and a teacher. Oh, oh how wonderful. You were delicious. And congratulations. Everybody won. And very good. See how hard it is? Okay, bye-bye.